All right, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the three biggest mistakes I made in my detailing business that have cost me tens of thousands of dollars. Let's get into it. The first mistake I made was when I first started and probably took me about a year to correct this one, and it was undercharging. I was charging $50 and $75 when I first started, and granted, I wasn't really doing full detailing. I was doing more, you know, a light wash and vacuum and wipe down, um, but I still could have charged a little bit more. I didn't know I could. I didn't know what I was doing at the time, which is, you know, the price I paid at the time to learn that lesson. Um, but even when I, you know, even a couple months down the road, I was charging, you know, I bumped it up like 60 and 90 and then 100 and 150. And then, you know, eventually over about probably eight to 10 months, I got up to the prices where I'm in now, uh, anywhere from the 250 to 500 range. I recommend for anybody just starting, don't undersell yourself. You have to value your time um, and charge accordingly. Uh, a rule of thumb that I use is about $100 an hour. If you're not charging at least $100 an hour, you're undercharging. Um, and it, you're going to get better customers when you raise your prices. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, but when you're charging $150, I remember I would get calls about my details when I charged $150 and people trying to haggle me on price because they're trying to pay for a $150 detail. They can't afford a premium detail, which all the premium guys were charging what I am now, $250 to $350. So I was getting the lower tier customers. They're harder to please. The customers we get now have expendable income. They want a professional detail and they know it costs $250 to $350 and they're prepared to pay that. They don't blink an eye at it. So we get better customers now and we make more money. The only way you can hire employees, get a company truck, uh, pay for insurance, pay for better marketing is to charge more money. There's no way around it. You have to make more money to spend more money and you have to also value your time. I mean, detailing, it is a manual labor job, but it's all, it, it, there are premium offerings for detailing. Like you can charge $100 an hour easily and it gives you enough room to, to hire employees and to expand your business. The next biggest mistake I made was not saving enough for taxes. And this one caught up to me probably about 13, 14 months into the job because the first two or three months we were detailing, we didn't make enough to, do, to pay a lot of taxes. Um, so we just did it on TurboTax or whatever and it was like nothing. But the next year, I just didn't account for it. I was too busy focusing on growing the business, how marketing, hiring employees, how do I grow? And I just didn't think about it. And when t the year came around, we made about $100,000. Uh, I didn't have enough set aside to pay taxes. So we had to pay, you know, a little bit of installments throughout the next few months to pay it off. But if I had just thought about it ahead of time, like we do now, we have a tax account and I just put a percentage in there every week when we do distributions. And I'm going to make a video about that later about how we do our banking system. Um, but we have a a bunch of accounts and they're all labeled and they are assigned percentages. Um, and that way you know how much you have to spend for the business, how much you made personally, how much the government gets, um, all kinds of stuff. And I'll make a video about that later. Um, but setting aside a percentage amount for taxes, anywhere from about 10 to 15% is normally a good rule of thumb. Um, will save you headaches down the road um, at the end of the year when you get a tax bill and you don't have any money for it because um, you've already spent it on marketing or whatever um, or paid yourself what, the what you owe the government, which is a probably what I did my first year. But go ahead and set aside some money for taxes throughout the year. Just set aside a percentage every month um, of what you make gross, and it will save you a lot of headaches down the road when you get that tax bill. You'll just be able to pay it off all at once and not have to think about it a second time. The last mistake I made, and it won't be the last one I ever make, but it's the biggest one that I could think of is around hiring. So when I first started, I hired my first employee less than a year into the business. Um, right when I graduated college, I hired my first employee. Um, and it was awesome, but I did a kind of a system where I hired uh, hired fast rather and fired slow. So it took me about two years to really get the hiring process down to know what I was looking for. Um, but over time, I've gotten to where I am now. But when I first started, I would hire, you know, the first guy who applied or the first phone interview that went well, I'd bring them on, I'd train them, and then I'd just let them go free. Um, and it caused a lot of headaches. I would get calls from customers. Hey, it's 10 o'clock. The detail was at nine. I haven't heard from the guy. And then I call the detailer and he doesn't answer. I have no idea where he is. Um, or, you know, he's late to the jobs or there's complaints after the jobs, after he's done detailing, the customer has complaints. Um, and those things just add up to stress for you. Um, they're annoying. You have to go back. You have to get the detailer to go back or you have to go back and redo it. Um, and it's just not a sustainable way to grow a business. He, they should be getting raving reviews um, from all the customers. Uh, I've had great employees as well. And the difference between a good employee and a bad employee is so drastic. Um, I would get calls and I would know this is going to be a very happy customer on the other end of this phone when I answer rather than when I had a bad employee 
I'm dreading the call. I'm like, God, oh, do I pick this up? I don't know. They're just going to yell at me, but you have to pick it up, deal with it. And I normally, this is a side thought, but if you ever get a backup play from a customer, I just kill them with kindness. I offer free, we'll redo the entire thing for free. We'll give you a discount on what you already paid. I'll just throw you some money back. Whatever it is to keep them happy, um, you have to do it because it's for the long run of your business. It will work better for you. You want to be a customer oriented business um, rather than, you know, I want to make this $50 today um, rather than just giving them a $50 refund and making their day um, a little better because you should have got the job done the first time right. So it's really on you. But anyway, that's a side. That's an aside. Uh, I recommend when you're hiring, the process I do now is much more stringent. It's much harder. Now I hire slow and I fire really, really fast. So uh, when I do my applications, I'll have applications come in for about a week or two. I'll call them up every night, uh, the ones that come in, do a little phone intro interview, kind of answer some questions, see if they even qualify. Um, in our application, I need to know if they have a driver's license. Do they have a vehicle to get to and from the office or to the jobs? Do they have detailing experience, which isn't a make or break, but it is uh, preferred that they have detailing experience. It makes the training go a lot smoother. Um, and then why do they want to join our team? And that's just to kind of get a general idea. Um, and then I always ask them like where they've been working lately. If they don't have any prior work in a while, it's normally a red flag because um, they can't find work for some reason or they're just not looking. They might be lazy. Um, how they present themselves over the phone or over Zoom or if you do an in-person interview, um, are they kind of lazy about it or do they look like they don't care? That's normally a red flag. So if I get any like hint of a red flag now, I just cross them out. I'll go to the next guy until somebody just blows me away. Um, because you want to save yourself the headache on the front end on the hiring process rather than getting a call two months from now from an angry customer that they just didn't show up to work. So hire slow, fire fast. So now we also do a two-week trial period. So after they're done training, uh, they go out solo for two weeks. We'll talk on the phone a few times per week. If they have any questions, anything I need to go over with them. Um, and then after that, they're solo. If it doesn't work out in the two weeks, if they're making a lot of mistakes, if the customers are calling, complaining, if they're late, I normally just cut ties right there. It's going to save myself a lot of headaches. Just cut them now rather than wait two months and have to hire another guy in two months. Just go ahead and cut ties now. It also saves the businesses face a lot of uh, embarrassment um, and possible bad reviews as well. Um, but in general, it's going to take a little bit of you know training um, and probably a little bit of mistakes of hiring some bad apples here and there. Um, but once you get the general uh, idea of what a good hire looks like, how do they present themselves on the phone? What does their application look like? Um, how do they speak to the customers when you're doing the training? If they don't speak, it's only a red flag. They might just be shy. You have to also step back and let them kind of lead the detail um, to the customer at least. You know, Let them greet the customer. Let them talk the customer through what y'all did. And then you know, let them collect the payment at the end. Um, but you'll get a better idea as you go through. And then you have to be, as a general rule of thumb, hire slow and fire fast is what I recommend. These are the three mistakes, the three biggest mistakes anyway. I've made probably plenty more, um, but the three biggest ones I thought y'all could learn from. If you have any more questions about anything I've gone over in this video, or if you have a video idea um, that you'd like me to go over of how we do something, just let me know in the comments below. But until then, I'll see you.